Hey guys, welcome back or to the channel. This is 803 Garage and I'm currently in my basement editing videos through my phone. So this is the intro, forgot to do that, but we're gonna go and look at my wood chipper. Recently I acquired this, my uncle actually picked it up for me when he was working on his place. And uh, we're gonna throw some fuel into it and see how it turns over. Now without fuel, we can tell that it's empty. Right here, see so how dry that is, bone dry. Apparently it was sitting for five years. It was only used for a little bit, so I have no idea. We put it in there. That's what it sounds like. Now, kind of, you can kind of hear it uh, ticking over, and it sounds like it is making compression. But there's a flywheel in here, and I don't know how to disengage it. I don't even know if you can disengage it. I know nothing about this thing, so I flipped it up to uh, the rabbit instead of the turtle, and it looks in great condition. Apparently, the guy used it once. He was uh, cutting down. Um, what do you call it, uh, oak, and realized he needed a bigger machine. Obviously, you can only put so, this is how big you can put stuff in. So literally, you can't even get your hand in here. My mom actually had a nightmare about me losing my fingers to this thing, and no, that's not the case. Now, the really cool part is you can actually open the entire thing up, and then there's another way to change the way this is going. Now, I'm not sure why you would need that. It says it's got a three-way feed system. Um, chipper, shredder, and like rake in, drop in, dedicated chipper, shoot, all that kind of stuff. I don't know how to run this thing. I know nothing about these, but I want to add some fuel to it, see if it starts. You can see the cobwebs. Like it's not been used for quite some time. All right, so I moved this out of the way, put some fuel into it. I have it in choke, I have it in start for the running position. Um, as you can see, we've been clean, cleaning up the uh, property here. So we got a lot of stuff to do. Mom wants me to put all the tractors and stuff all in line right in here as I get to work on them and then I'll have space to actually work on them, which is amazing. And yeah, that's a generator for my welder. Welder's in the garage. It's, it's lots of stuff all over the place, the way I am. But I want to change that. Two, two poles, literally. It starts, two pools. I put fuel and it runs. That's crazy. I don't even know how to use this thing. <laughs> be careful, that's all I can say. I know, you had the nightmare about the, the thing and me cutting my fingers and oh. stuff. This, this is exciting. All right, I'm kind of scared now. I don't know, I'm, just, I'm just joking. We'll do like a partial choke. and clean. That's good. Oil also looks good over there. That's the oil. I wouldn't change it anyways. It's been five years old. It's sitting, so you never know. So we're going to try pulling this over a few more times. Alrighty, so we heard it run. We know it's not a clogged air filter, so we're going to uh, put that back. Like she looks good see that so that's good throw that back into place and the next one is this filter mesh so that's good it wasn't blocked like I thought it would be again I don't think it was used all that much um, then I'm gonna put the plastic piece on top there's this guy right here and we'll screw it back into place this uh and turn it for now. I'm gonna drill up here. There we go. Doesn't have to be all that tight. Same with this side. 
So we know the air filter is good. I'm going to change out the spark plug. Change out the oil. And probably go get that tonight. Oh. Or tomorrow morning, depending if they're still open. By the time I finish this video. But uh, I know somebody's been here before because this is where the shutoff valve was. Um, what are the modifications? Can I see? Oh, there's a dent up here, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, there was one other thing, I can't recall what it was. Oh yeah, this thing here. There's a wire hanging down. I pushed it out of the way. But there's a wire hanging down. That could be part of the oil. Um, so if there's low oil, that could be part of that system. That's not anywhere that can be found. So there's been a few things removed. So the fuel is always on, which I don't necessarily like, but it explains why the... Um, what do you call it? The fuel tank was empty because there's no fuel uh, shutoff valve. And then, uh, so if that's always on, I bet you that fuel is in the bottom end of this uh, unit because nothing's perfectly secure. So me changing oil is beneficial to this thing. Um, I did actually, I only got this for 100 bucks, but I only, uh, I did actually see one online recently and it was a six and a half horse, not uh, a a decent brand like Briggs & Stratton, it was a no-name, and they wanted a $600 for it, so at least this has got MTD on it, decent, not great, but decent, and then Briggs & Stratton, so it's a cast iron block, so it's pretty faithful. From that going forward, new spark plug, so I'll take that out, but I'm going to leave it in for now because it's raining, and uh, so I'll do that tomorrow, change the oil, and that way there's no fuel in the oil system, which is normal, all engines are like that. That's why you change oil often, because oil or gasoline is a solvent. And uh, we'll see if she fires right up again. I'm pretty sure she will. And I can always put an inline stop for the fuel, but I kind of prefer my units to be empty of fuel. That way, no uh, tar, varnish, whatever builds up in them. Because this will probably sit a good nine months out of the year without being used. That all being said, hope you have a great day. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh. Yeah.